So now that we've created a geometry base for our building and some alphas, we can now start applying these alphas to our actual base geometry here using surface noise. So to start off here, I just have our building loaded in. And I'm going to come over to the subtool palette here, and I'm actually going to duplicate this tool again. And this is going to allow us to kind of do that process where we're stacking geometry on top of each other and then applying different surface noise to each duplicate version. So I'm going to come over here and just make sure I have that building selected. And then I'm going to hit duplicate again. And now I have a duplicate version of that actual model. So I'm going to select the duplicate version. And I'm just going to make sure I have the other ones kind of hidden at this moment. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to scroll down the tool palette here and locate the surface tab. Now with the surface tab selected, you have an option right here that's just called noise. So we're just going to go ahead and click that. Now after you click that tab, you're going to end up getting this noise maker window, which will pop up. And in here you'll see a version of the model here, and then a whole bunch of sliders and options over here on the side. So now with this noise maker panel open, we need to actually apply one of our alphas to our model. Now, we don't have any UV coordinates established on this mesh, so we're going to be using the 3D noise system. So basically, what this is going to do, it's going to take the position of your model in this window, and when I actually click on this alpha tab here to load an actual alpha, it's then going to load that alpha based on this actual camera angle. So, a quick example of this, if I position my building like so, and then come over here and just click on alpha, here I have a whole bunch of those alphas I've kind of generated using that process we just went over. And I'm just going to come here and pick one that's pretty obvious. So let's pick this kind of a circular pattern here. So now I have this circular pattern loaded in. And if I come over here and just adjust some of these sliders, so I'm going to change the strength slider. Just move this down so you can just kind of see this really quick. And I'm going to turn the basic noise all the way down to zero. So now you can see that this alpha here is now applied in this direction on my building. But as I rotate the building, you'll see that since this alpha was applied at this angle in which the model was facing when I clicked on this, that when I rotate to the side, that alpha is basically just shooting through the model. So you can see here, the back side looks like the front side, and then the sides are actually just the edges kind of extruded or shot all the way through. So this 3D mapping here is basically using a planar mapping based on the camera angle of your model. So if I want this to be at a different angle on my mesh, I just need to rotate the model to the angle I want it at, and come over here and click off alpha, and then click it back on. And if I pick that same alpha again, now you'll see that this alpha has once again been projected in that planar fashion by the camera view. And if I rotate my model now, you'll see I'm getting this type of effect on the actual surface. So this is actually a very interesting way to generate variations on your alphas. So you can just change the camera angle and apply the same alpha and you'll get different results. So now that you have a better understanding of how kind of the 3D mapping is actually being applied to your model inside the Noisemaker window here, we can come through and change these settings now and create a interesting effect on our actual building. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually position my model like this and I'm going to reload a different alpha. The circle effect is kind of nice, but I don't really want it on this building. So I'll come over here and turn it off and then with my building positioned like so, I'm going to turn it back on and I'm going to select a more kind of appropriate kind of alpha here. So I kind of want to start with a kind of windowed pattern. So possibly something like this. So something to give kind of the window effect on an actual skyscraper. So we're going to choose this guy here and just open him up. And as you can see, as he's opened up, he's been applied in this direction based on my canvas here. And if I rotate the model, you can see that this alpha, since it was mostly lines, it's actually looking nice at pretty much all angles. So the front angle, I'm getting kind of those window panels. And then on the sides, I'm getting kind of these nice kind of directional kind of flow. So you can see this alpha works pretty well, even with the planar mapped uh, noise we're using here. So after I have this kind of set, I'm going to come over here and just kind of change some options as well. Right now the strength is being driven in a negative fashion. So in order to increase the actual power, you're actually driving it in a negative fashion rather than a positive fashion. So if you want to actually change that, just come down here to this uh, graph down here and just click on this flip horizontal button right here. And this is going to reverse our actual graph here, which is driving how that actual alpha is being applied. So now when we do a positive strength, we're actually going to positively add that alpha in the space. 
So this is going to take all the white values on our map here and then push them away from the actual surface of the actual model. So now that we have that kind of changed, we can come up here and we can increase the strength all the way up. And so that's looking pretty good. So now let's just hit OK and return back to our model. And as you can see, as we returned out a noise maker, this is now being viewed on top of our surface of our model here. And so if we want to disable this, we can just come over here and just turn noise on or off. You can kind of see that result. And you'll notice if I turn polyframes off here, that I'm not really getting that kind of effect of that strong surface noise on the actual model. And this is because right now, this noise is actually being viewed in preview mode. So this allows you to kind of rotate around and see how that noise is actually going to be applied, but it's in just preview mode, so it's just displaying it as fast as possible. Now to see what this actual noise looks like actually on your model, there's two ways to kind of do this. The first way, you can actually apply it to the mesh here, which will actually turn it into true geometry, or you can simply come up here and click BPR. Now, when I click BPR, it's actually going to render the model with BPR, and you're going to be able to see that actual surface noise applied to the mesh. So as you can see here, you can see all those areas of that surface noise have kind of spiked out of the building there. So now you kind of see I'm getting that kind of building type effect there. Now, if I rotate to the side here and then just run that again, you'll notice that the building is looking okay. Uh, if you're doing a sci-fi building, this may work, but it's not really looking like a skyscraper. So we're going to come through and now adjust some other settings in this actual surface noise modifier. So we're going to go back over here and click on edit. And the first thing we're going to actually adjust is this actual offset slider right here. So if I position my model here to the side and then just start adjusting this offset here, it's actually going to start culling or clipping out parts of the mesh corresponding to the alpha gradient values. So as you can see here as I turned it on instantly, all the black values on the actual alpha there that were being applied to the model have now been culled out. And as I slide the slider up or down, it will actually start culling or clipping out more of those values. So what this is going to allow you to do is I can come through and just cull out a certain area. So say something around here, something in the middle, so maybe about 0.5. And now when I hit OK to return back to my model and then run BPR again, you're now going to notice I'm getting this kind of effect on my building. So now my building is feeling a lot less heavy and I just have these nice kind of rail effects on the actual sides. Now this process is also truly clipping out the geometry as far as BPR or the apply to mesh setting are concerned. Now you can also see that on this mesh here when it's actually rendered in BPR I have these kind of rounded areas. Well you may not always want these rounded areas on your actual mesh. So let me just first come into the surface noise here, and I'm just going to disable the offset setting and then come back. And then I'm going to zoom in to one of those areas that you saw that kind of round nature, so say like this part right here. So now since this model is entirely welded together, when that actual surface noise is being applied, it's looking at this face normal and this face normal, and then generating a blend in between the two. So if I render this with BPR quick, you'll see that now it's generating this kind of rounded effect. And you can see everywhere on that actual model where I had those harsh edges on the lower version, since they're all welded together, the actual normals are actually creating this kind of smooth nature to your mesh. So if you want to actually have areas in your model that are not getting this kind of smooth effect, we just need to come through and detach those actual faces. Now to do this, I'm going to come over here first and just turn off noise, and then I'm going to turn my polyframes on. So you may remember when we were actually generating this building, we established polygrouping based on all the face normals on our model. And so this is going to allow us to come through and actually separate single parts or all these different faces all at once. So to kind of generate the single part effect, we're just going to isolate one of these actual polygroups here. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift and then simply click on a point on one of these areas of polygrouping. So just like right here and click and that's going to isolate that section. Now with this section isolated, I'm going to come over here to the actual geometry tab, and I'm going to go to modify topology, and I'm going to click this unweld groups border. So what this is going to do, it's going to unweld the border of any polygroups on this actual model here. Now since this is the only visible part of my mesh, it's only going to unweld this polygroup. So I come over here and click that. You'll see now that that process has happened, 
and the rest of the model is now visible. Now it has applied a mask during this process. I just want to clear that off by just holding control and dragging off on the canvas. And now if I go back to my surface noise modifier here and turn my surface noise back on, you're going to notice that any of the noise that's actually applied to that actual polygroup right through there that we just unwelded is going to stay harsh. And then the other areas are still going to have that kind of blended effect. So I'm going to turn off polyframes and I'm just going to render with BPR quick. So now you can see that I'm getting a harsh angle between this area here, but then I'm still getting those kind of smooth angled blends over here. So this is giving me more kind of that style I'm kind of looking for with that kind of harsh fall off there. And this is happening across just that actual polygrouped area where we applied that unweld. So if I want to now go through and apply this unweld to everything on my mesh, I'm just gonna turn polyframes back on. I'm gonna go back to the geometry tab here and I'm going to go to the Modified Topology panel and I'm just going to click Unweld Groups Border. Now since I have the entire model visible on my canvas right here, it's going to unweld all the polygroups on the mesh. So unlike the process we just did where we just isolated one of these guys and unwelded, it's going to unweld everything. So I'm going to come over here and just click on that Unweld and now you can see this entire model here has now been unwelded. And now if I go back down here to the actual Surface tab, and turn back on my noise and zoom in here. I'll zoom in on that area right here. Turn off polyframes and now click BPR. You're going to notice that now I'm getting these kind of harsh angles generated across my model. So this is giving me more of what I'm kind of looking for with those actual kind of lines on my actual mesh. So now I can go back into the surface noise modifier here and just click edit and I'm just going to adjust my offset back to say that negative 0.5 and then I'm just going to hit OK and now I'm going to render with BPR one more time here. And so now I'm getting this kind of effect. So this is giving me a little more kind of interesting shape and it's not generating all those rounded angles all over my model where I may not have really wanted them. Now right now this is also just the windows of the actual mesh. So since we duplicate this tool, if we come back up to the actual subtool menu here, we can actually turn the visibility on for the actual model we had without the surface noise, the original version. So just turn that on quick. And now I have both these guys visible on screen here. So now if I render with BPR, this first model, the original one, is going to just render like normal. And the second one with that surface noise applied and the offset value set is going to generate on top of it. So if I click BPR now, I'm now generating this as my actual building. So this is looking really nice for the amount of time it took to kind of generate this process. So now that we have one of these noise passes is actually applied to our building, let's go ahead and apply another one to add even more kind of details to the structure here. So I'm gonna come back over here to the subtool palette and I'm gonna select the original mesh and I'm just gonna create another duplicate version of that model. So now I have a, another version and then I'm just going to click this eyeball icon over here just to hide everything except for that new duplicate I just created. So I'm going to do the same process we just did for the other ones. I'm going to scroll down here to the actual surface tab and I'm going to activate noise. Now with this one I'm actually going to come to the actual top view of the actual model here and I'm going to apply an alpha like this. So this is going to give me that precise alpha on the top but then it's going to take that alpha and stretch it in like a vertical fashion along the model. So this kind of gives some interesting results and effects of like pillars on the actual building. So I'm just gonna make sure the model's uh, facing up like so. And I'm gonna come over here and click on alpha. And now I'm gonna select a, another alpha from the list here. So let's just go through here quick. And we're gonna get some more of one of the kind of futuristic looking type alphas here that I created. So maybe this one right here. And then we're just gonna hit open on that. And then we're going to do the same process. We're going to flip it horizontally to make sure that it's going in a positive direction with strength and crank that all the way up. And then we're going to turn the mix basic noise all the way to zero. And then we're going to manipulate uh, some of these sliders just a little bit here. So maybe we don't want the strength that high. So maybe something around there. And then we're going to adjust the scale some to make it a little bit bigger. So maybe 1.5 or so. And then we're going to change the offset as well to give it something similar to like the other one we had. So maybe around 0.4 or so. 
and we can adjust the scale a little bit more or less to kind of get you know, different patterns or results on the actual model here. Maybe something like that. And then we're just going to hit OK. So now we return to our model. You're going to get something like this. So you can have this kind of pillar effect now being generated on the building. If we render that with BPR quick, you end up with something like this. So it's kind of like pillar formation. Now this formation, I'm actually kind of liking the uh, kind of rounded natures to these actual edges here. So I'm probably not going to go through and break up all those faces and just kind of keep that surface structure. Now if I want to see this with the other building parts, I'm going to come back to the actual subtool menu up here. And I'm just going to turn the eyeball icon on for both of those other parts. And now when I render with BPR, I'm going to have all three of those uh, subtools kind of layered together. So you can see I'm getting this kind of now piping effect on the actual building on this side. I'm getting these round areas here from this actual subtool. So you can see I'm adding more depth and kind of detail to the actual building. So this is a really cool way to just keep coming through and adding uh, different dimensions and styling to your building as you're working on it inside of ZBrush. So now there's two more other things of note really quick. So say I have like part of this model and I don't want some of that surface noise to actually be affected on a certain area. So if I have this guy selected here and just turn on solo, these are those pillars again. So let's say I don't really want the pillars on this kind of lobby area here. Well, to remove this, all I have to do is hide or delete that area of the model, and then the surface noise won't be applied there. So to do this, I'm going to come back down here to the Surface Noise tab, and I'm just going to disable surface noise temporarily so I can see the building here. And then I'm going to turn on polyframes, and I'm just going to quickly come through and remove this lobby section. So I'm just going to hold Control and Shift, which is going to give me my Select Rectangle Brush, and I'm going to click, which will isolate the part first. Second click will hide that part, and then any corresponding clicks, holding control and shift and clicking, will hide the other polygrouped areas on my model. So I come through and just quickly hide that actual polygrouped area. So now that lobby part is now hidden on my mesh. So now if I turn polyframes off and then turn the surface noise back on, you'll see that now the surface noise is not affecting those hidden areas. So now if I get out of solo again, you'll see here's my model. And you can already tell that the pipes are not going to be applied there. And so if I render with BPR quick, you'll see that I have the kind of pipe structure here, but it's not affecting this area on your mesh. So you can actually come through and hide areas and then even use the delete hidden function to remove those areas completely. And this will allow you to come through and tailor specific areas on your model where you may not want any of that surface noise to be applied. So really nice kind of functionality there. Now one more thing, after you have all this kind of generated out, um, you may actually want to turn this into real geometry. So to do this, it's actually easy as well. You just need to come back up here to the Geometry tab, and then just simply click on Convert BPR to Geo. So this is going to take that BPR effect we were looking at for the subtool you have selected, and then convert it straight to geometry. So I have the pillars selected here, so if I click on Convert BPR to Geo, and then go into say Solo Mode, you now see that all that pillared area on the model now is true geometry. So now I can repeat this process for the other subtool. So I just come and select that subtool there. And then just come over here and click on Convert BPR to Geo. And now this part of the model is also tangible geometry. So now if I turn all these guys back on and turn off Solo, you now see I now have this full building in actual true geometry. So that's the quick process um, to come through and create a building using NanoMesh and the ZModeler brush and the surface noise inside of ZBrush. We're going to continue on here and render this model out inside of KeyShot.